Good afternoon, gentlemen. This is the first in about three presentations I've been making on uh, capital budgeting decisions. It prepared and presented by Mr. James. First, we will take a look at the um, introduction to capital budgeting. Uh, simple definition of capital budgeting is the making of long-term planning decisions for investments. We have examples of capital budgeting decisions. We have three here, but they are much more than that. But these are three of the major ones that you will come across very often. First, we have modernization. The decision being, should we purchase new labor saving equipment to perform operations presently performed manually? And uh, next we have replacement decisions and decisions. Should we replace existing equipment with more efficient, newer equipment? And then we have what is called expansion decisions. Should we enter a new market with a new product or should we purchase an existing business already in that market? As you can see, those are decisions that a business manager may have to take, usually in the long term. The long term is described as being more than one year. But some of these decisions can have uh, effects that last as much as 10 years and 20 years. And some capital budgeting concepts, the definition of terms, Capital budgeting, the total process of generating, evaluating, selecting, implementing, and following up of investments in non-current assets. You want to note that it is non-current assets. Sometimes it is called capital expenditure appraisal. That's another name you would see in some of the textbooks. Another term we will come across is capital assets. Consists of assets used to generate future revenues or cost savings by providing production, distribution, or service capabilities for more than a year. Okay? So they must do, the, the assets must do these things. It must generate future revenues, or it could be in the terms of cost benefits, where you save some costs that you would have otherwise in good. And it must provide production, distribution, or some service capability. In other words, it should be bringing in an income. Capital expenditure is the money spent in obtaining, that which should be obtaining capital assets. That's a typo here. Here we have the stages in capital budgeting. First, you must identify a need for a project. There must be some need for making the capital investment. Otherwise, there's no point in going into it. There must be a need for expansion or a need for modernization, something like that. Information acquisition. So then you will gather up data on the feasibility options. There should always be more than up 
one option in order for you to make decisions. If you only have one op one option, then there's no choice to be made. And um, that is the decision you're going to have to take. Selection, when there's more than one option, you're going to have to choose an option. Then you have to arrange financing and you implement and control, you start and you control the project. Okay, so five stages, you may see it divide six, no, that's five, five stages there, and you may see it divided up into other um, stages as well in some textbooks. We'll be looking at the information acquisition, the guideline up of the data on the feasibility studies, and uh, the selection of the project. And we will use four appraisal methods for selecting. In screening or selecting, a specific criteria is used to eliminate unprofitable and a high risk investment proposal. The projects must meet the criteria and the projects not meeting the criteria would be rejected. Okay, so projects meeting the criteria will be accepted and projects not meeting it would be rejected and later on in the coming uh, presentation we we'll see what the criteria are and what the different preference selection the surviving projects are subjected to a ranking criteria you must rank them in some order and the one that has the best ranking is normally chosen. The outcome is the most favorable projects are selected for any given amount of capital to be invested. We're going to look at some characteristics of business investments. Capital business investment. Most business investments involve depreciable assets. That is non-current in assets and they must have a return on the investment that extend over long periods of time long period again being defined as more than one year some examples of depreciable assets property plant equipment developmental works notice it does not who into current assets, because current assets are of short life and it's usually less than law uh, one year. One of the things that affects uh, your project is going to be depreciation. Okay, so this slide gives us a theoretical view of depreciation. You start with an investment. As time goes by, the value of the investment would depreciate. Because the investment is usually in a depreciable assets or a non-current asset. And it's going to decrease if it decreases by one per year. We'll notice that the value will go down five, four, three, two until we get the salvage value. Okay. The, so the amount of depreciation is measured at 
consumed as a depreciation expense. The aim of that is to meet the matching principle or accrual principle where you must match the revenue with the relevant course. To illustrate, a firm purchases land, a non-depreciable asset for 5,000 and rents it out at 750 per year for 10 years. What is the return? Now, if it does not um, rent out the land, then there, there would be no return. And um, we wouldn't really call the purchase of the land an investment. Okay? There must be a return. What is the return? Since the asset will still be intact at the end of the 10 year period, each year's $750 in flow of rent is a return on the original 5,000 investment. The rate of return is therefore 750 over 5,000 equals 15%. Okay, so that is our rate of return. A simple rate of return calculated there. Return on assets. Okay. To provide returns on assets, the, the purpose of your investment, it must provide a return on the original investment plus a return of the original investment itself. An example is um, the 5,000 in the land that you were going to rent out just now. You must, you can just return the, get a return of 750 each year. You must also recover the uh, 5,000. Okay, so that's the end of the presentation. It's a very short presentation again. Um, you are invited to read further on it in chapter eight of your text. You would see a section on capital budgeting. We will 